I know a lot of people like to think that, oh, it's in our nature and that we're like bonobos and that we should just go around boning because we're animals. That's a lie. That's a postmodern uh, Marxist theory that facilitates the communist takeover. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I have struggled a lot over the last few years mentally wrestling between being a man whore and celibate. Society has definitely brainwashed me into thinking that I need to sleep with hundreds of women, and sometimes I even get down on myself for not. I get pressure from friends and others around me. The flip side is that I use a lack of confidence with girls as an excuse to not sleep with them. I feel lost when it comes to these paths which women and I hate the pressure of society for men to sleep around and if you don't, you're a bitch. What do you think? Well, let's talk about that for a moment, right? Let's talk about why men are encouraged to sleep around. This all started, I know a lot of people like to think that, oh, it's in our nature and that we're like bonobos and that we should just go around boning because we're animals. That's a lie. That's a postmodern uh, Marxist theory that facilitates the communist takeover. Right? What am I talking about? This all really started coming to a head during the 1960s sexual revolution. This is when feminists, and feminism is a branch of communism slash Marxism. Marxism is the philosophy. In, in other words, cultural Marxism is the social philosophy that allows communism to be unfolded. But feminism is a part of that. Make no, make no bones about it. Feminism isn't, doesn't just stand on its own as a as some righteous movement that women wanted. In fact, most women didn't want feminism. Most women didn't want feminism. Feminism was forced on women because they knew, the Marxists understood that it was a means by which they would subvert the power of the men in a society, and through feminism, men grow weak. How do men grow weak through feminism? Feminism isn't just about elevating women, it's about degrading men. How? Because when the sexual revolution, which unfolded as sexual liberation for women because of what? The pill, abortion, and free love hookup culture. This is all brand new. Was about removing chastity as a value from women. Women have always traditionally, particularly, well, all, all traditional societies held chastity as a paramount virtue because it not only is respectful to themselves, but a chaste woman respects men. A chaste woman respects men because she understands the power of her sexual nature. Woman, just by being, my mere virtue of being a woman is attractive to men. Just, it doesn't, you don't even, just by virtue of them having a vagina, right? Just think about it as a black hole. They say in science that a black hole does what? It sucks. It sucks things in. She's walking around with a black hole and men can't help but be sucked in, right? Now, it doesn't excuse men at all, but if that black hole is respected, is um, modest, if, 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 if the soul that embodies that black hole that sucks men in is modest, she will protect not only herself, but she respects the men from being drawn in. Women are not fools about their seductive nature. So when the sexual revolution unfolded, chastity blew up, came off, and women now had no impetus to protect themselves because they can just have sex and sterile transient sex they can just have sterile transient sex and if they have a baby they can kill it i have a baby and i can kill it and divorce is a part of this also i can allow a man to get addicted to my twat and i can fall into emotional uh addiction with him and because that's what fornication does fornication turns turns what would be a coming together of two souls in union in order to help each other get to heaven, to sanctify each other into an, an emotional roller coaster. Now that we've, because we have disordered sex through fornication and we're in this disordered emotional relationship, when we get married, the woman, once the emotions go away, 
can say, oh, I'm done. I don't feel in love with you anymore, right? That's why 90% of divorces in many states are initiated by women, right? So all this liberated the, the lowest nature of women, which then unleashed the lower nature in man. So men are so stupid that once women removed their chastity and made themselves vulnerable, we fell victim to their, to their sensuality and became victims to them. Now we follow women. Men follow women. Why? Because the, because the gate's wide open. The gate's wide open and we're over here wanting it. There's no reason not to because the culture tells you, oh, it's a great idea to have sex with lots of women. Sterile transient sex. Blow your load in a bag or blow your nut in this woman whose body thinks that she's pregnant because she's taking hormones. Or if the baby comes, just let her kill it. Right. So all this diabolical totally diabolical, has drawn men into a, into a state of hypnosis. We're in a state of, we're, we're not grounded any longer. We don't have any virtue any longer. And in fact, it's encouraged through the, the movies, through the music, through the media. Now all your friends, everybody's doing it. Everybody's involved in this diabolical, disoriented state where we're just, we're addicted to emotional ecstasy through physical debauchery. So the sexual revolution unleashed that demon on our society. And if you watch, uh, there's a video by Father Chad Ripperger about the, um, the levels of spiritual warfare. And he talks about the different levels of the, spirit, of, the, of, the, um, of the kingdom, of the kingdom of Satan. And there are specific uh, demons, I think it's Moloch, there are specific devils that preside over a society that open it up to different sins. And I think, it, I, I think it's Moloch. I could be wrong. But he says that Moloch rules sexual impurity. And he says, so the, the minute that the sexual revolution unfolded, Moloch began to uh, control, what is this, possess the culture. And so most of us are thinking from a demonic mindset when it comes to sex, and we're under the influence of a demon, the demon of sex. And there's a demon of, of homosexuality, right? That, and the two of them sort of work. He says that because there's a structured order, it has to happen in an order. So he says the first, the first part of the order is uh, fornication. He says the first demon comes out, and once he opens the door for fornication, then... He, then the next demon can come and open the door for abortion or, or contraception. He says, then the next demon comes and opens the door for contraception. Then the next demon comes and opens the door for abortion. Then the next demon comes and opens the door for homosexuality. And right now, we have some real wild demon running us through this transgender craziness. <laughs> right? I don't know what that demon's called. I don't know if that demon's ever been unfolded. But I'm sure it has been, because history repeats itself. So I say all this just to give you a sense of the attack that we're under in terms of fornication culture. Don't, you can't be proud about being manipulated by the demon that's making you want to fall into disorientation with these women. We have to protect these women because they can't protect themselves anymore because they've taken the apple, they've taken the bait, and they think that they're empowered because, they're, because they can kill their babies and sterilize themselves, but they're not. They're, salvage, they're, they're sacrificing their souls. Why? Women love controlling men, but they hate men that they can control. Let that one sink in. They know that they can control you. Remember we were talking about women who wear promiscuous clothing or, or, or scanted clothing? Because they want to control your head, and they love that. They walk around with the high heels and the boobs pressed up and the, and the, the piece of their butt showing. And they love that they can control a man. A man, a man is out of control. That's one of the reasons why you don't look at women. Don't look at women when they dress that way because she's just there as your slave master. You're a, you're, you're a slave to her, a sensual slave to her. And they love that. They love that they can control you. They love the fact that if they spread their legs that you'll do anything for that. Think about the hoops that men will jump through in order to get a piece of that puss. 
They'll spend all their money. They'll stay up all night long. They'll we'll do all kinds of dumb, disorienting things just to get a little crumb of that gush. Women love that power because, I mean, it's human nature. They like power, but they hate men that they have power over. They hate you because they'll resent you for being so weak for falling for their puss. Because a woman knows, intrinsically, men and women know their state. Men and women, regardless of what they've been, we've been taught and, what, and, and, the, and the illusion and delusion that we're under, women know that, that men are to be looked up to. Men, right, it, it, not to say that women are less than us, but men are the providers, men are the protectors. We're stronger, we're smarter, right? It's not a bad thing, it's not anything against women, but men have a different state in life and we have a different responsibility as a result, but yet we, we eschew our responsibility and our authority to bow down to a woman in that regard. She hates that. That's like if you ever have a boss. Do you ever have you ever work somewhere and you have a boss and you know your boss is weak and everybody walks all over your boss? You hate that boss because you have no respect for him. No respect for this guy. Nobody listens to him. He doesn't speak up when people are doing things wrong. Everybody just pushes him around. When a woman has you pussy whipped, she feels the same way about you. But you ever have a boss that stands his ground, he speaks up, he does the right thing, a dignified leader? You look up to that guy. I remember having football coaches like that. Like, man, this guy, nobody can mess with him. I was kind of a slap dick when I was a football player because I was so good. I became a prima donna at one point. And I was like, I do whatever I want. So I would like, you know, do, come late or I would just like do something stupid, right? And I had one football coach who would not, other coaches would tolerate it. So I did it, right? I was young. I was stupid. I was a beta male. But I had one coach who was like, uh-uh. I don't, I, he told me, he said, I don't care who you are. You ain't going to come on here and act that way with me. You know what? I respected that man so much because he didn't need me because I led the team in sacks and touchdowns. I was good. But he was like, no, you, I'm your coach. I respected that man. I, that's, a, that's the man that I would reach out to today. I want to know what happened to Coach Barton. I remember Coach Barton. Anyway, so I'm not giving you advice I'm hoping to stir you out of this sense because it's completely diabolical and it doesn't help men. There's no pride in falling for lust. No pride in it. You know what there's pride in? And I was listening to this audiobook, The Sinner's Guide, and, and, and I, I know that it's, it may, maybe I'm dreaming, but did you know that there's a higher state in heaven for virgins? Did you know that there's virginal graces? There are grace for people, not incels who are, who are involuntary celibate, but men who choose celibacy. There's a certain charism that comes with that. There are certain graces that come with being a deliberate, a voluntary celibate. I want to bring that back. I know people, they, I know y'all, a lot of people denigrate me for my positions on things. And I know I sound a lot real weird. But when men start weaponizing chastity, that's one thing. But when men have honorable chastity, when my, uh, men are honorably celibate, deliberately celibate, like good looking men, men with money, men who could get girls, but say no. Because they understand that they can, they're going to fall into that. And even men who are schizoid in a way, who can just like, you know, schizoid slash psychopath, who can just bone a bunch of women and feel nothing about it. I'm just blowing my load and they just kick them out. That is even more diabolical. Because I'm talking about guys who can cringe, guys who can shudder, guys who feel, right? And there's nothing wrong with that either, right? But when you, you have two ends of the spectrum, you have those guys that become addicted to the feelings of falling in love. I know I was that way. I just like being in love and I want to be in love. And so I love having sex with you. That feels good, but they want to be in love. But then you have guys that they just, they get a power trip for, for manipulating women and they don't really feel any love. They're just blowing their load and feeling pride. Both, they're both ends of the same spectrum and both of them are losing. 
So men that are needy because they want something and because they're, they're, they're lovers, addicted lovers, that's bad. And I speak, I speak out about that a lot because I know a lot of you guys are in that place. But there's the guys, and I know some of you guys are this way too, who I can sleep with any woman I want. And I've slept with 100 women. And I got a sense of pride about it. That's maybe worse. You know how that's worse? It's worse because you behave more like a woman as a result. Check this out. A woman, they say, in an average day, gets offered dick a dozen times. Just because they can doesn't mean they should. And that's a part of what birth control pills, contraception, abortion, divorce has allowed women to do. They've sunk in, they've allowed women to sink into their most base instinct with no, with no responsibility and no regard. A man who does that, who blows his load in, blows his load, blows his load in a bag with hundreds of women is just like that slut of a woman. You're a slut. You're a slut. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And any sense of pride that you have about that is, is falsely placed. What pride is there in manipulating a woman? First of all, and a lot of women want to be manipulated. Don't get me wrong. I'm not blaming just the guys. Manipulating these women or, or, fall, or laying down with easy women. A lot of these women, it's not even about manipulating them. These women are just so damn easy. They're sluts. What pride is there in sleeping with a slut? Besides, hey, I had a good time. Is a good is it there's something is, is there some pride associated with having a good time? Do you go to I'm not gonna say Disney World because Disney's on its way out. <laughs> I like to see what's happening in Disney. They're getting destroyed. You go to a theme park, right? You go to Bush Gardens and you riding a roller coaster and you're eating that big chicken leg, that turkey leg, and you're eating ice cream and you're drinking a big uh, soda, you're having a good time. Do you walk out of there and, and feel proud? Wow. I feel so proud about my, I did it. No. <laughs> you just, you just indulged in a lot of entertainment. So I know people knock me, they're like, oh, Elliot, you've been with the same girl for so long, you don't know anything about this. I'll tell you what, it gives me perspective that y'all don't have. The fact that I haven't indulge gives me perspective because I can see I have no hang-ups anytime anybody ever says something about oh uncle E not sleep with a lot of women so you shouldn't take advice from him just remember I haven't had that addiction I haven't fallen into that so I can see but if you're falling into that if you're into that the last thing you want is somebody telling you don't do that but because I'm over here saying don't do that right just I I wasn't a drug addict so does that mean that you shouldn't take advice from me about how bad it is to be a drug addict? No. Now, a guy who's been a drug addict and has repented, turned around, and is like, boy, I remember when I was a drug addict, and I warn you, don't do it. His word is even stronger than mine. But how many guys are there out there like that? Not many. Most of these so-called manosphere guys or red pill guys or, you know, the guys I know you guys are listening to, they are drug dealers, they're drug addicts, and they're perpetuating the whole disorientation that we've fallen into. Somebody asked me the other day in an interview, Elliot, so then what is the peak of a man, right? Like, like what, what personifies a man in his true essence, in his kingly state? And how do we dissolve this boyish sense of manhood that most people portray. Fatherhood, patriarchy. When, when we start um, venerating fatherhood and taking it seriously to repair the sins of our fathers so that we can raise daughters and sons that will forsake the fornication culture, that's when this whole thing turns around. We can't wait for women to do it. We can't wait for the next generation just to happen to figure it out. We can wait for the deluge. We can wait till God just wipes us out and says, okay, these people are too far gone. I'm sure a lot of that is happening right now anyway. But those who are ready to change this thing, we got to become fathers ourselves. I understand I'm like a father figure to a lot of you guys, so I'm giving like old Uncle E daddy advice. 
but the next generation, your children, your sons, your daughters. I talk to my children about this. Am I going to be with my children every day, all the time? No, but they know what their daddy said. They know what their daddy believed. They know what their dad told them to do and not to do. Most fathers, they just let it happen, whatever's going to happen. They send their daughters off to college to be in some sorority, to get run through and ride, ride the cock carousel. Think nothing of it. Well, she's a grown girl now. She's 18. 18! That means that you no longer are responsible for her purity? That's not true. A father is responsible for his daughter's purity until he gives her away in marriage. So all these sluts, you got to blame their dads. Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you say something? And it doesn't mean that the girls are going to do what the dad says, but there's a better chance when there's a strong father, a father that speaks up. So I was so pleased to hear two of my daughters say the other day, they said, Dad, I want, I want to grow up and I want to be a wife and I want to be a mother. I heard that from my daughters. That's what I want. I want to be a wife. And a they, told my, they told my wife that. I was like, well, that, makes me that makes me so proud because they're going to carry themselves as a wife would be, a woman looking for a husband would be. Most women are just looking for power. They're looking for a good time. They're looking for free stuff. They're looking for attention. And y'all are just giving it to them. You're just dumping it all into that black hole. You're dumping all your value into that black hole. Along with other, a, a thousand other men that have dumped their stuff in there too. So anyway, I know I'm ranting. He says what? I get down on myself for not sleeping with hundreds of women. You, we need to bring back the pride in virginity. Bring back pride in chastity. It's going to come back. Whether I want to or not, I know I said earlier that I think I'm dreaming, but it's, I'm usually ahead of the curve. I know that about myself. I say shit before people realize that what I'm saying is true. So uh, I, I accept that. <laughs> I accept that about myself. Like, I, can't, I know people aren't going to hear me, but five years from now, everybody's going to be talking about it. And I'll be on to something else. He says, the flip side is that I use lack of confidence with girls as an excuse not to sleep with them. I guarantee you, you'll be more confident with women if you don't need to sleep with them, if you're not trying to sleep with them. That means go and talk to a lot of girls. Go and be friendly with a lot of girls. Go and demonstrate your value, but be very clear about your boundaries. Right? And the crazy thing is, Women are like this. We're all like this. The fact that you not trying to sleep with them, they're going to want to sleep with you. The fact that you try, not trying to be with them, they're going to want to be with you. So you get to practice your status. You get to practice the way you carry yourself and the way you speak to women and the way you behave with women. And, and, and you get to even be a little uh, courageous with women because you don't need anything from them. It's very, it's easy to be courageous when you don't need something. If you go to a, if you go into a business, <laughs> let's say, let's say you have a job that pays six figures, right? You got a, I got a great job. But then somebody offers you a job that pays half of that. And for some reason you decide, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mess around. I already got a good job, I already making good money. I'm gonna go to this job interview. You go in that job interview, you're going to be loose. You're going to be relaxed. You're going to be charismatic. You're going to have fun because you don't need the job. So you're just going to be like, whatever. That's going to be your best job interview ever because you're relaxed and you don't need the job. So you, as long as you don't need sex from women, you're going to be so confident with them because you don't need anything from them. <laughs> so he says, I feel lost when it comes to these paths and I hate the pressure of society. Forget the pressure of society. Who cares about the pressure of society? Let society walk off the cliff. I already told you that society is under the influence of all these different sexual demons. It is. Study Father Ripperger's uh, uh, YouTube video. Satan's Kingdom. I don't remember what it's called. But it's probably his most, it's the most popular video on the Census Fidelium channel. If you go to Census Fidelium, the number one watch video is the one I'm talking about. He tells you, he lays it out. He says, these are the different demons that come at different times in order to unfold different diabolical ways that people fall into to take down a society. <laughs> 
So I don't even know where I came from or where I'm going with this, but you don't need to feel, you don't need to let that pressure. It's, the, the pressure is, you allow yourself to feel the pressure. You don't need to feel the pressure. You allow that pressure to be pre pressed on you. You could just ignore it. And if you don't, you're a bitch. No, you're not a bitch. You're, you're a bitch when, <laughs> you guys got me cursing. You're a biatch when you follow what society is asking of you, literally, right? Because women are followers. When you, act, when you follow what society is telling you, you falling in, you acting like a woman. Oh, but everybody's doing it. Wilhelm Reich discovered this. Wilhelm Reich, I love him and I hate him, but he discovered this. A lot of things I say about women and people don't like that I'm saying it. Oh, Elliot's misogynist. No, I'm just calling it the way it is. He did a scientific study on women and he found that when a woman is by herself and she's been brought, and she has her value or virtue and she's not a slut, he says it's very hard to crack a woman open sexually if she's been brought up with the right virtues and she's by herself. You get her isolated because she's strong in her virtue and there's no, you know, she, she, she'll stay that way. Catholic women he's speaking about. Catholic women in the 1950s. Catholic women in the 1950s, you couldn't crack. He said, though, that as soon as you show them other women doing it, they let down their guard. This was the whole point of Woodstock. He helped mastermind Woodstock. One of the points of Woodstock was to get all the women together all behaving badly because when women are with other women that are behaving badly, they behave badly. This was his, and he did studies on this. And so he even, he even influenced a lot of our modern day marketing, right? Where it, a lot of our TV shows come from this insight from Wilhelm Reich. He says that if you show women, other women on TV behaving like sluts, women will start behaving like sluts. And he says, so the way you break women open into falling into these sins is you got to show them other women that are falling into the sin. As long as they see other women doing it, they go, oh. Because women are egalitarian. They, they realize that, oh, well, we are all in, we're all the same. And if they're doing it, and if they're all doing it, then I, it must be good for me to do too. <laughs> that's, a, that's why women need to be protected. But we're not protecting women when we're just going along with their, with all the things that we're talking about right now. We're not protecting them, we're not protecting ourselves. That's why the society's going to shit. Sorry, fellas. So he said, so I'm saying that you are a B, Ach, when you do what you, what you see. All the guys are doing it. Hey, all the guys are doing it. And they say it's fun and they're having a good time. You're acting like a fag. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.